Rio Tinto is an Anglo-Australian multinational and one of the world's largest metals and mining corporations. The company was founded in 1873, when a multinational consortium of investors purchased a mine complex on the Rio Tinto, in Huelva, Spain, from the Spanish government. Since then, the company has grown through a long series of mergers and acquisitions to place itself among the world leaders in the production of many commodities, including aluminium, iron ore, copper, uranium, and diamonds. Although primarily focused on extraction of minerals, Rio Tinto also has significant operations in refining, particularly for refining bauxite and iron ore. The company has operations on six continents, but is mainly concentrated in Australia and Canada, and owns its mining operations through a complex web of wholly and partly owned subsidiaries. Rio Tinto has joint head offices in London, Global and PLC, and Melbourne, Limited, Australia. Rio Tinto is a dual listed company traded on both the London Stock Exchange, where it is a component of the FTSE 100 index, and the Australian Securities Exchange, where it is a component of the S&P ASX 200 index. Additionally, American depository shares of Rio Tinto's British branch are traded on the New York Stock Exchange, giving it listings on a total of three major stock exchanges. <laughs> Formation Since antiquity, a site along the Rio Tinto, in the Andalusian province of Huelva in Spain has been mined for copper, silver, gold, and other minerals. Around 3000 BC, Iberians and Tartessians began mining the site, followed by the Phoenicians, Greeks, Romans, Visigoths, and Moors. After a period of abandonment, the mines were rediscovered in 1556 and the Spanish government began operating them once again in 1724. However, Spain's mining operations there were inefficient, and the government itself was otherwise distracted by political and financial crises, leading the government to sell the mines in 1873 at a price later determined to be well below actual value. The purchases of the mine were led by Hugh Matheson's Matheson & Company, which ultimately formed a syndicate consisting of Deutsche Bank 56% ownership, Matheson 24%, and the civil engineering firm Clark, Punched & Company 20%. At an auction held by the Spanish government to sell the mine on 14 February 1873, the group won with a bid of GB £3,680,000 The bid also specified that Spain would permanently relinquish any right to claim royalties on the mine's production. Following purchase of the mine, the syndicate launched the Rio Tinto Company, registering it on 29 March 1873. At the end of the 1880s, control of the firm passed to the Rothschild family, who greatly increased the scale of its mining operations. <laughs> Operating history. Following their purchase of the Rio Tinto mine, the new ownership constructed a number of new processing facilities, innovated new mining techniques, and expanded mining activities. From 1877 to 1891, the Rio Tinto mine was the world's leading producer of copper. From 1870 through 1925, the company was inwardly focused on fully exploiting the Rio Tinto mine, with little attention paid to expansion or exploration activities outside of Spain. The company enjoyed strong financial success until 1914, colluding with other pyrite producers to control market prices. 
However, World War I and its aftermath effectively eliminated the United States as a viable market for European pyrites, leading to a decline in the firm's prominence. The company's failure to diversify during this period led to the slow decline of the company among the ranks of international mining firms. However, this changed in 1925, when Sir Auckland Geddes succeeded Lord Alfred Milner as chairman. Geddes and the new management team he installed focused on diversification of the company's investment strategy and the introduction of organizational and marketing reforms. Geddes led the company into a series of joint ventures with customers in the development of new technologies, as well as exploration and development of new mines outside of Spain. Between 1925 and 1931, Geddes recruited two directors, J. N. Buchanan finance director, and Room Preston commercial director, as well as other executives involved with technical and other matters. Perhaps most significant was the company's investment in copper mines in northern Rhodesia, later Zambia, which it eventually consolidated into the Rokana Corporation. These and later efforts at diversification eventually allowed the company to divest from the Rio Tinto mine in Spain. By the 1950s, Franco's nationalistic government had made it increasingly difficult to exploit Spanish resources for the profit of foreigners. Rio Tinto Company, supported by its international investments, was able to divest two-thirds of its Spanish operations in 1954 and the remainder over the following years. <laughs> Major mergers and acquisitions Like many major mining companies, the Rio Tinto has historically grown through a series of mergers and acquisitions. <laughs> Early acquisitions The company's first major acquisition occurred in 1929, when the company issued stock for the purpose of raising £2.5 million to invest in northern Rhodesian copper mining companies, which was fully invested by the end of 1930. The Rio Tinto Company consolidated its holdings of these various firms under the Rokana Corporation by forcing the various companies to merge. Rio Tinto's investment in Rhodesian copper mines did much to support the company through troubled times at its Spanish Rio Tinto operations spanning the Spanish Civil War, World War II, and Franco's nationalistic policies. In the 1950s, the political situation made it increasingly difficult for mostly British and French owners to extract profits from Spanish operations, and the company decided to dispose of the mines from which it took its name. Thus, in 1954, Rio Tinto Company sold two-thirds of its stake in the Rio Tinto mines, disposing of the rest over the following years. The sale of the mines financed extensive exploration activities over the following decade. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Merger with Consolidated Zinc. The company's exploration activities presented the company with an abundance of opportunities, but it lacked sufficient capital and operating revenue to exploit those opportunities. This situation precipitated the next, and perhaps most significant, merger in the company's history. In 1962, Rio Tinto Company merged with the Australian firm Consolidated Zinc to form the Rio Tinto, Zinc Corporation and its main subsidiary, Consinc Rio Tinto of Australia 
The merger provided Rio Tinto the ability to exploit its newfound opportunities, and gave Consolidated Zinc a much larger asset base. RTZ and CRA were separately managed and operated, with CRA focusing on opportunities within Australasia and RTZ taking the rest of the world. However, the companies continued to trade separately, and RTZ's ownership of CRA dipped below 50% by 1986. The two companies' strategic needs eventually led to conflicts of interest regarding new mining opportunities, and shareholders of both companies determined a merger was in their mutual best interest. In 1995, the companies merged into a dual listed company, in which management was consolidated into a single entity and shareholder interests were aligned and equivalent, although maintained as shares in separately named entities. The merger also precipitated a name change. After two years as RTZ CRA, RTZ became Rio Tinto plc and CRA became Rio Tinto Limited, referred to collectively as Rio Tinto Group or simply Rio Tinto. Topic recent mergers, acquisitions, and events Major acquisitions following the Consolidated Zinc merger included U.S. Borax, a major producer of borax, bought in 1968, Kennecott Utah Copper and BP Australia's coal assets which were bought from British Petroleum in 1989, and a 70.7% interest in the New South Wales operations of coal and allied industries, also in 1989. In 1993, the company acquired NERCO and the United States coal mining businesses of Cordero Mining Company. In 2000, Rio Tinto acquired North Limited, an Australian company with iron ore and uranium mines, for $2.8 billion. The takeover was partially motivated as a response to North Limited's 1999 bid to have Rio Tinto's Pilbara Railway Network declared open access. The Australian Competition and Consumer Commission regulatory body approved the acquisition in August 2000, and the purchase was completed in October of the same year. That year, Rio Tinto also bought North Limited and Ashton Mining for $4 billion, adding additional resources in aluminium, iron ore, diamonds, and coal. In 2001, it bought under Coal and Allied Industries the Australian coal businesses of the Peabody Energy Corporation. On the 14th of November 2007, Rio Tinto completed its largest acquisition to date, purchasing Canadian aluminium company Alcan for $38.1 billion. As of 2014, the largest mining deal ever completed. Alcan's chief executive, Jacintha Cote, led the new division, renamed Rio Tinto Alcan with its headquarters situated in Montreal. Activity in 2008 and 2009 was focused on divestments of assets to raise cash and refocus on core business opportunities. The company sold three major assets in 2008, raising about $3 billion in cash. In the first quarter of 2009, Rio Tinto reached agreements to sell its interests in the Corumbor Iron Ore Mine and the Jacobs Ranch Coal Mine, and completed sales of an aluminium smelter in China and the company's potash operations, for an additional estimated $2.5 billion. On 5 July 2009, four Rio Tinto employees were arrested in Shanghai for corruption and espionage. One of the arrested, Australian citizen Stern Hu, was suspected of stealing Chinese state secrets for foreign countries and was detained on criminal charges, according to a spokesman for the Chinese Foreign Ministry. 
Stern who was also accused of bribery by Chinese steel mill executives for sensitive information during the iron ore contract negotiations on the 19th of March 2010 Rio Tinto and its biggest shareholder Aluminum Corporation of China Limited Chinalco signed a memorandum of understanding to develop Rio Tinto's iron ore project in the Simandu mine in Simandu Guinea on 29 July 2010, Rio Tinto and Chinalco signed a binding agreement to establish this joint venture covering the development and operation of the Simandu mine. Under the terms of the agreement, the joint venture maintains Rio Tinto's 95% interest in the Simandu project as follows by providing $1.35 billion on an earn in basis through sole funding of ongoing development over a two to three year period, Chalco, a subsidiary of Chinalco, would acquire a 47% interest in the joint venture. Once the full sum was paid, Rio Tinto would be left with a 50.35% interest in the project and Chalco would have 44.65%. The remaining 5% would be owned by the International Finance Corporation IFC, the financing arm of the World Bank. On the 22nd of April 2011 Rio Tinto, its subsidiary Simfa SA Simfa, and the Guinean government signed a settlement agreement that secured Rio Tinto's mining rights in Guinea to the southern concession of Simandu, known as Blocks 3 and 4. According to the agreement, Simfa would pay $700 million and receive mining concession and government approval of the proposed Chalco and Rio Tinto Simandu joint venture. In April 2011, Rio Tinto gained a majority stake in Riversdale Mining. In 2011, the company rekindled its interest in potash when it entered a joint venture with Akron Group to develop the Albany Potash Development in southern Saskatchewan. Canada. Following an exploration program, Akron in a June 2014 statement described Albany as, "...one of the best potash development opportunities in the world." On 13 December 2011, an independent arbitrator cleared the way for Rio Tinto, which had owned 49% of Ivanhoe Mines now known as Turquoise Hill Resources, to take it over, he said the $16 billion Canadian group's poison pill defense was not valid. Ivanhoe had developed OYU Tolgoi in Mongolia, one of the world's largest known copper deposits. On 28 January 2012, Rio Tinto gained control of Ivanhoe Mines and removed the management. In October 2013, Rio Tinto agreed to sell its majority stake in Australia's third largest coal mine to Glencore and Sumitomo for a little over $1 billion, as part of the firm's plans to focus on larger operations. Less than a year later, Rio Tinto rejected two merger proposals from Glencore, proffered in July and August 2014. The merger of Glencore and Rio Tinto would have created the world's largest mining company. In May 2015, Rio Tinto announced plans to sell some of its aluminium assets as part of a possible $1 billion deal, two years after a similar but failed attempt. Topic corporate status Rio Tinto is primarily organized into four operational businesses, divided by product type, aluminium, aluminium, bauxite and alumina copper and diamonds, copper and by-products such as gold, silver, molybdenum, and sulfuric acid, and the company's diamond interests energy and minerals, uranium interests, industrial minerals such as borax, salt and titanium dioxide. The corporation previously held coal production assets. Iron Orith SA operating groups are supported by separate divisions providing exploration and function support. 
Topic stock structure and ownership Rio Tinto is structured as a dual listed company, with listings on both the London Stock Exchange symbol, Rio, under the name Rio Tinto plc, and the Australian Securities Exchange symbol, Rio, in Sydney under the name Rio Tinto Limited. The dual listed company structure grants shareholders of the two companies the same proportional economic interests and ownership rights in the consolidated Rio Tinto, in such a way as to be equivalent to all shareholders of the two companies actually being shareholders in a single, unified entity. This structure was implemented in order to avoid adverse tax consequences and regulatory burdens. To eliminate currency exchange issues, the company's accounts are kept, and dividends paid. In United States dollars, Rio Tinto is one of the largest companies listed on either exchange. As such, it is included in the widely quoted indices for each market, the FTSE 100 Index of the London Stock Exchange, and the S&P, ASX 200 Index of the Australian Securities Exchange. LSE listed shares in Rio Tinto plc can also be traded indirectly on the New York Stock Exchange via an American depository receipt. As of 4 March 2009, Rio Tinto was the fourth largest publicly listed mining company in the world, with a market capitalization around $134 billion. As of mid-February 2009, shareholders were geographically distributed 42% in the United Kingdom, 18% in North America, 16% in Australia, 14% in Asia, and 10% in continental Europe. <laughs> BHP Billiton bid On 8 November 2007, rival mining company BHP Billiton announced it was seeking to purchase Rio Tinto Group in an all-share deal. This offer was rejected by the board of Rio Tinto as significantly undervaluing the company. Another attempt by BHP Billiton for a hostile takeover, valuing Rio Tinto at $147 billion, was rejected on the same grounds. Meanwhile, the Chinese government-owned resources group Chinalco and the U.S. aluminium producer Alcoa purchased 12% of Rio Tinto's London-listed shares in a move that would block or severely complicate BHP Billiton's plans to buy the company. BHP Billiton's bid was withdrawn on 25 November 2008, with the BHP citing market instability from the global financial crisis of 2008–2009. Topic Chinalco investment On 1 February 2009, Rio Tinto management announced that they were in talks to receive a substantial equity infusion from Chinalco, a major Chinese state-controlled mining enterprise, in exchange for ownership interest in certain assets and bonds. Chinalco was already a major shareholder, having bought up 9% of the company in a surprise move in early 2008. Its ownership stake had risen to 9.8% by 2014, making it Rio Tinto's biggest investor. The proposed investment structure reportedly involves $12.3 billion for the purchase of ownership interests of Rio Tinto assets in its iron ore, copper, and aluminium operations, plus $7.2 billion for convertible bonds. The transaction would bring Chinalco's ownership of the company to roughly 18.5%. The deal is still pending approval from regulators in the United States and China, and has not yet been approved by shareholders, although regulatory approval has been received from Germany and the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. 
The largest barrier to completing the investment may come from Rio Tinto's shareholders. Support for the deal by shareholders was never overwhelming and has reportedly declined recently, as other financing options such as a more traditional bond issuance are beginning to appear more realistic as a viable alternative funding source. A shareholder vote on the proposed deal was expected in the third quarter of 2009. Rio Tinto is believed to have pursued this combined asset and convertible bond sale to raise cash to satisfy its debt obligations, which required payments of $9 billion in October 2009 and $10.5 billion by the end of 2010. The company has also noted China's increasing appetite for commodities, and the potential for increased opportunities to exploit these market trends, as a key factor in recommending the transaction to its shareholders. In March 2010, it was announced that Chinalco would invest $1.3 billion for a 44.65% stake in Rio Tinto's iron ore project in Simandu, Guinea. Rio Tinto retained 50.35% ownership at Simandu. In November 2011, Rio joined with Chinalco to explore for copper resources in China's complex landscape by setting up a new company, CRTX, 51% owned by Chinalco, and 49% by Rio Tinto. Management Under the company's dual-listed company structure, management powers of the Rio Tinto are consolidated in a single senior management group led by a board of directors and executive committee. The board of directors has both executive and non-executive members, while the executive committee is composed of the heads of major operational groups. Board of directors Executive directors Simon Thompson, chairman Jean Shebastian Jacques, chief executive officer Jakob Storsholm, Chief Financial Officer Non-Executive Directors David Constable Megan Clark AC Anne Godbehir Moya Green Simon Henry Sam Laidlaw Michael Lestrange Ow Topic Operations Rio Tinto's main business is the production of raw materials including copper, iron ore, bauxite, diamonds, uranium, and industrial minerals including titanium dioxide, salt, gypsum, and borates. Rio Tinto also performs processing on some of these materials, with plants dedicated to processing bauxite into alumina and aluminium, and smelting iron ore into iron. The company also produces other metals and minerals as byproducts from the processing of its main resources, including gold, silver, molybdenum, sulfuric acid, nickel, potash, lead, and zinc. Rio Tinto controls gross assets of $81 billion in value across the globe, with main concentrations in Australia 35%, Canada 34%, Europe 13%, and the United States 11%, and smaller holdings in South America 3%, Africa 3%, and Indonesia 1%. Topic: Copper and byproducts. Rio Tinto Copper. Copper was one of Rio Tinto's main products from its earliest days operating at the Rio Tinto complex of mines in Spain. Since that time, the company has divested itself from its original Spanish mines and grown its copper mining capacity through acquisitions of major copper resources around the world. 
The Copper Group's main active mining interests are Minera Escondida in Chile, the Grasberg Mine 40% stake in Indonesia, Kennecott Utah Copper in the United States, North Parks in Australia, and Palabora in South Africa. Most of these mines are joint ventures with other major mining companies, with Rio Tinto's ownership ranging from 30% to 80%. Only Kennecott is wholly owned. Operations typically include mining of ore through to production of 99.99% purified copper, including extraction of economically valuable byproducts. Together, Rio Tinto's share of copper production at its mines totaled nearly 700,000 tons, making the company the fourth largest copper producer in the world. Rio Tinto Copper continues to seek new opportunities for expansion, with major exploration activities at the Resolution Copper Project in the United States, La Grana Mine in Peru, and Oyu Tolgoy in Mongolia. In addition, the company is seeking to become a major producer of nickel, with exploration projects currently underway in the United States and Indonesia. Although not the primary focus of Rio Tinto Copper's operations, several economically valuable byproducts are produced during the refining of copper ore into purified copper. Gold, silver, molybdenum, and sulfuric acid are all removed from copper ore during processing. Due to the scale of Rio Tinto's copper mining and processing facilities, the company is also a leading producer of these materials, which drive substantial revenues to the company. Sales of copper generated 8% of the company's 2008 revenues, and copper and byproduct operations accounted for 16% of underlying earnings. Rio Tinto exclusively provided the metal to produce the 4,700 gold, silver, and bronze medals at the London 2012 Olympic and Paralympic Games. This was the second time Rio Tinto had done so for Olympic medals, having previously provided the metals for the Salt Lake City 2002 Winter Olympics. Together, Rio Tinto's share of copper production at its mines totaled nearly 700,000 tons, making the company the fourth largest copper producer in the world. Rio Tinto also owns the naming rights to Rio Tinto Stadium located in nearby Sandy, Utah, and the home of the Major League Soccer team, Real Salt Lake. Topic: Aluminium. Rio Tinto consolidated its aluminium-related businesses into its aluminium product group, originally named Rio Tinto Alcan, formed in late 2007 when Rio Tinto purchased the Canadian company Alcan for $38.1 billion. Combined with Rio Tinto's existing aluminium-related assets, the new aluminium division vaulted to the world number one producer of bauxite, alumina, and aluminium. Aluminium division kept key leadership from Alcan, and the company's headquarters remain in Montreal. Rio Tinto divides its aluminium operations into three main areas, bauxite, alumina and primary metal. The bauxite and alumina unit mines raw bauxite from locations in Australia, Brazil, and Africa. The unit then refines the bauxite into alumina at refineries located in Australia, Brazil, Canada, and France. The primary metal business unit's operations consist of smelting aluminium from alumina, with smelters located in 11 countries around the world. 
The primary metal group also operates several power plants to support the energy intensive smelting process. The aluminium division has interests in seven bauxite mines and deposits, six alumina refineries, and six specialty alumina plants, 26 aluminium smelters, 13 power plants, and 120 facilities for the manufacture of specialty products. The acquisition of Alcan operations in 2007 substantially increased Rio Tinto's asset base, revenues, and profits. In 2008, 41% of company revenues and 10% of underlying earnings were attributable to the aluminium division. Topic: <laughs> Coal and uranium, Rio Tinto Energy. Rio Tinto Energy is a business group of Rio Tinto dedicated to the mining and sale of coal and uranium. The company focuses on both fuel coal for electricity generation in coal power plants, and coking coal for use in iron and steel mills. The company's coal operations are located in Australia and the United States, mainly operating under its subsidiaries such as Rio Tinto Coal Australia and Rio Tinto Energy America. In 2009, Rio Tinto was engaged in an ongoing attempt to sell off assets of Rio Tinto Energy America. In March 2009, the company agreed to sell a major asset, the Jacobs Ranch coal mine in Wyoming, to Arch Coal for $761 million, and is continuing to seek buyers for remaining assets in an effort to reduce corporate debt. In 2011, the group acquired various coal mining assets in Mozambique, including the Benga coal mine for $3.9 billion. In 2013, the assets were written down by $3 billion, while CEO Tom Albanese and coal mining head Doug Ritchie, who spearheaded the purchase, were ousted from the company. In February 2014, the assets were written down by a further $470 million. On 28 July 2014, Rio severed its interest altogether, selling out to International Coal Ventures Private Limited a consortium of companies owned by the Indian government for $50 million. ICVL had been one of the underbidders when Rio bought in. Rio Tinto's uranium operations are located at two mines the Ranger Uranium Mine of Energy Resources of Australia and the Rossing Uranium Mine in Namibia. The company is the third largest producer of uranium in the world. According to Rio Tinto's website, the company institutes strict controls and contractual limitations on uranium exports, limiting users to peaceful, non-explosive users only. Such controls are intended to limit use of the company's uranium production to use as fuel for nuclear power plants only, and not for use in the production of nuclear weapons. Rio Tinto Energy was responsible for 12% of revenues and 18% of underlying earnings in 2008. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Diamonds, Rio Tinto Diamonds. Rio Tinto Diamonds operates three diamond mines, the Argyle Diamond Mine in Western Australia 100% ownership, the Diavik Diamond Mine in the Northwest Territories of Canada 60% ownership, and the Marawa Diamond Mine located in Zimbabwe 78% ownership. Together, these three mines produce 20% of the world's annual production of rough diamonds, making Rio Tinto the world's third largest producer of mined diamonds. The Diamond Business Unit's most advanced exploration project is the Bunda Project in District Chhattapur, Madhya Pradesh, India, where Rio Tinto became the first foreign group to be granted a prospecting license there. 
Rio Tinto Diamonds generated 1% of revenues and earnings for Rio Tinto in 2008. Topic: <inaudible> Industrial Minerals, Rio Tinto Minerals. Rio Tinto Minerals is a diverse business group with mining and processing interest in borates, salt, and gypsum. Rio Tinto Borax, with main operations in California and another mine in Argentina, supplies nearly half of the world's annual demand for refined borates. The Minerals Group is also majority owner of Dampier Salt, which produces over 9 million tons of salt and 1.5 million tons of gypsum annually from its three facilities in northwest Australia. Rio Tinto Minerals accounted for 6% of company revenues and contributed 3% to earnings in 2008. On the 31st of January 2010, the management of US Borax locked out its hourly workforce, replacing the workers with non-union workers and managers from other Rio Tinto operations. The 560 International Longshore and Warehouse Union Local 30 members immediately began a fireside vigil that garnered national and international labor attention. ILWU filed several unfair labor practices against the company, including an illegal lockout claim. Iron products and titanium, Rio Tinto iron and titanium Rio Tinto Iron and Titanium oversees the company's iron and titanium production. RTIT generated a large portion of the company's revenues and earnings in 2008, accounting for 27% and 52%, respectively, of company wide operating results. Rio Tinto is the world's second largest supplier of iron ore, producing over 153 million tons in calendar year 2008. The company's major iron ore mines and development projects are located in Australia, South America, Canada, India, and Guinea. Major subsidiaries held within RTIT include Hamersley Iron, majority interest in the Pilbara Iron Mines, and the Iron Ore Company of Canada. The company also runs smelting facilities for the production of iron and steel, limited in size in comparison to the massive amount of iron ore produced at QIT Verre Titane in Canada and Hismelt in Australia titanium dioxide is mined at three locations in Canada South Africa and Madagascar and refined at QIT Verre Titane's Canadian facilities Major subsidiaries include Richards Bay Minerals of South Africa and QIT Madagascar Minerals. In 2008, Rio Tinto produced 1.524 million tons of titanium dioxide, or approximately 27% of the estimated global production of 5.6 million tons. A media report in October 2013 revealed that the corporation plans to establish a fully automated railroad system for the transportation of iron ore across the Australian outback by 2015, thereby replacing the corporation's train drivers. The United Kingdom-based transport historian Christian Walmar stated at the same time that the train drivers are most likely the highest paid members of the occupation in the world at that time. As part of an overall strategy to increase profit margins, the corporation is spending $518 million on the project. Topic: Technology, Rio Tinto's development of autonomous technologies. Rio Tinto is a global leader in the development of autonomous technologies for use in the mining sector. 
As of 2018, Rio Tinto's fleet of 80 autonomous Komatsu vehicles had moved over 1 billion ton of ore and waste material in Western Australia's Pilbara region. Furthermore, in late 2017 Rio Tinto announced funding for their Kudaderi mine in Western Australia, which Rio Tinto had dubbed their "...intelligent mine." The proposed plan at the Kudaderi mine is to fully integrate advanced robotics, driverless trucks and driverless trains into its operations. Financial results Rio Tinto's revenues and earnings have grown substantially in 2003 to 2010, with one of the largest increases attributable to the company's acquisition of Alcon in 2007. Although operating margin is significantly impacted by the market prices of the various commodities it produces, Rio Tinto has remained profitable over its recent history and consistently generated positive cash flows from operations. <laughs> Public impact Topic: Involvement with Axis powers in World War II. Rio Tinto's status as a mainly British-owned company, located in Spain and producing pyrites, an important material for military applications, created a complicated set of circumstances for the company's operation in the 1930s and 1940s. During the Spanish Civil War, the region in which Rio Tinto's mines were located came under the control of General Franco's nationalists in 1936. However, Franco increasingly intervened in the company's operations, at times requisitioning pyrite supplies for use by Spain and its Axis allies Germany and Italy, forcing price controls on the company's production, restricting exports, and threatening nationalization of the mines. Although company management and indirectly, the British government managed to counteract some of these efforts by Franco, much of the mine's pyrite production was channeled to Axis powers before and during World War II. Nonetheless, Franco's meddling caused the mine's production and profitability to fall precipitously during and after the war, leading the company to ultimately exit from its Spanish operations in 1954. Topic. Criticisms Topic. African iron ore In 2015, Rio Tinto was criticized by the Guinean government for the many mining delays at the local Simandu mine. C. C. Noramu, government official said the government was running out of patience, and President Alpha Cond himself said that, "...there have been people at Simandu for 15 years, 20 years, and they've never produced a ton of iron." In late 2016, Rio Tinto agreed to sell its stake in the Simandu iron ore mine to Chinalco and exit the deal. The deal was negotiated after the company's case against Vale and BSGR was dismissed at U.S. District Court. <laughs> <laughs> Mental health It has been widely reported that more can be done to improve the mental health of fly-in fly-out workers in the mining industry. In the Pilbara region, Western Australia it is reported that the state is experiencing high levels of suicide and people dealing with mental health issues. 
As a major contributor to FIFO and residential employment in the region they have recognized mental health as an area that requires a strategy of prevention and early intervention. To assist staff the company provides numerous resources to assist in maintaining a healthful mind. In 2017 Healthier Workplace WA provided the Iron Ore Product Group Gold recognition for their work in this field. <inaudible> <inaudible> environment Rio Tinto has been widely criticized by environmentalist groups for its mining activities. Opposition to the company focuses on its mining methods due to environmental degradation, the company's coal operations for their contribution to global warming, and uranium operations for environmental and nuclear technology concerns. Perhaps the most significant environmental criticism to date has come from the government of Norway, which divested itself from Rio Tinto shares and banned further investment due to environmental concerns. Claims of severe environmental damages related to Rio Tinto's engagement in the Grasberg mine in Indonesia led the Government Pension Fund of Norway to exclude Rio Tinto from its investment portfolio. The fund, which is said to be the world's second largest pension fund, sold shares in the company valued at 4.85 billion kr $855 million to avoid contributing to environmental damages caused by the company. Exclusion of a company from the fund reflects our unwillingness to run an unacceptable risk of contributing to grossly unethical conduct. The Council on Ethics has concluded that Rio Tinto is directly involved, through its participation in the Grasberg mine in Indonesia, in the severe environmental damage caused by that mining operation. Rio Tinto disputes the claims of environmental damage at the Grasberg mine, and states that the company has long maintained an excellent record on environmental issues. Topic: Labor and Human Rights. Activist groups have also expressed concern regarding Rio Tinto's operations in Papua New Guinea, which they allege were one catalyst of the Bougainville separatist crisis. The British anti-poverty charity War on Want has also criticised Rio Tinto for its complicity in the serious human rights violations which have occurred near the mines it operates in Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. On the 31st of January 2010, Rio Tinto locked out nearly 600 workers from a mine in Boron, California, USA. Rio Tinto was also accused of planning and funding the murder of RTI activist Shela Masood in Bhopal, India. Apparently, she was protesting illegal diamond mining done by Rio Tinto in connivance with government officers. The case was, however, solved and no connection to Rio Tinto was established, though popular opinion still perceives them as the possible culprit. Rio Tinto is not, however, universally condemned for its ethical behavior. The company has won an award for ethical behavior, the World Aware Award for Sustainable Development in 1993. The award, although given by an independent committee, is sponsored by another multinational corporation in this case, the sponsor was Tate & Lyle. Rio Tinto has, in turn, sponsored its own World Aware Award, the Rio Tinto Award for Long-Term Commitment. The British charity World Aware ceased to exist in March 2005. These awards, awarded to extractive industries which make some environmental commitments to deflect the more general criticisms of their operations, are referred to by corporate watchdog groups as greenwashing. Topic: <laughs> Corruption allegations. 
In 2009, Chinese authorities began investigating allegations against Rio Tinto. These included bribing executives from 16 of China's biggest steel mill companies in order to get hold of secret information. On 29 March 2010 four Rio Tinto employees were found guilty of these charges and of accepting millions of dollars in bribes. They were ordered to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines, and sentenced to 7 to 14 years in jail. Rio Tinto has been embroiled in a number of corruption allegations over its acquisition of stakes in the Simandu iron ore mine in Guinea. The allegations center around the payment of a $10.5 million bribe to François de Combray, a French banking consultant who was a friend and advisor of President Alpha Conde. Rio launched an internal probe into the matter, run by an independent law firm, and on 9 November 2016 announced it would report the findings to the United States Securities and Exchange Commission (SEC). The serious Fraud Office United Kingdom, the Australian Securities and Investments Commission, and the U.S. Justice Department. They also declared they would cooperate with all related investigations and fired two top executives in connection with the matter, one of whom was Head of Energy and Minerals, Alan Davies, who led the Simandu operation in 2011. He was suspended after the investigators discovered suspicious emails discussing contractual payments from that year. Davies claimed that there were no grounds for the termination of his employment. The president denied having any knowledge of the illegal transactions, but recordings obtained by France 24 prove otherwise. Sam Walsh, the retiring CEO of the company, has had 80% of his pay withheld while the investigation continue. Also in early November 2016, former mining minister of Guinea, Mahmoud Thiam, claimed that the head of Rio Tinto's operation in Guinea offered him a bribe in 2010 in order to win back control of the Simandu mine, and that his offer was supported by senior members of the company. Rio Tinto is currently facing at least four class action suits in the U.S. demanding damages over the corruption allegations in Guinea. The suit states that Rio Tinto made materially false and misleading statements that deceived investors. In July 2017, the Serious Fraud Office (SFO) announced the launch of a fraud and corruption investigation into the company's business practices in Guinea. Following the news of the investigation, Rio Tinto shares in the US dropped by 1.4%. The Australian Federal Police is also investigating the allegations. Rio Tinto has announced it would cooperate fully. After the SFO investigation announcement, and amid a search for a new CEO, Rio Director John Varley was forced to resign from his role in the company. SEC investigation The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is investigating a $3 billion impairment charge against Rio Tinto regarding a coal deal they made in Mozambique. Rio acquired Riversdale Mining Limited, an Australian coal mining company with significant interests in Mozambique, in 2011 for $2.9 billion in an all-cash deal. Two years later they wrote down the value of the assets by $3 billion. Following the impairment charge, which included an additional $11 billion in asset write-downs, Chief Executive Officer of Rio Tinto, Tom Albanese stepped down from his post and left the company. Rio later sold the assets for $50 million. See also Diamonds as an investment